Market Economies and Forest Fungi by Adriana Panic. Resource inequality is one of our greatest challenges, but this challenge is not unique to humans. Mycorrhizal fungi that live in plant and tree roots strategically trade, steal, and withhold resources, displaying remarkable parallels to humans in their capacity to be opportunistic and sometimes ruthless, all in the absence of cognition. It's very interesting to consider what fungi networks and relationships reveal about human economies and what they can tell us about inequalities. Imagine a market economy that's 400 million years old, one that's so huge it can connect millions of traders simultaneously and persistent enough to survive mass extinctions. This is happening right now, under our feet. You just can't see it. Unlike human economies that rely on cognition to make decisions, traders, fungi in this case, in this market they beg, borrow, steal, and cheat, all in the absence of thought. Hidden from our eyes, plant roots are colonized by a fungus called Arbuscal mycorrhizae, which form complex underground networks with fine filaments, thinner than strands of cotton. Follow one of these fungi and it connects multiple plants simultaneously. So. What does plant roots covered in fungi have to do with our global economy? Trade deals made by plant and fungal partners are surprisingly similar to those made by humans, but perhaps even more strategic. They're not exchanging stocks and bonds, but rather essential resources like sugars and fats, getting all their carbon directly from their plant partner. So much carbon that roughly 5 billion tons of carbon per year from plants go into this underground network. You can think of this as the physical stock exchange of the trade market. Up until now, this all seems pretty harmonious. I scratch your back, you scratch mine, both partners getting what they need, until we consider the power of evolution and natural selection. There's no room for amateur traders in this market. Making the right trade strategy determines who lives and who dies, which is why certain plants only communicate with certain fungi. A scientific study conducted in Panama proved fungi to be consistently good at discriminating among good and bad trade partners. Thus, creating perfect conditions for a market to emerge, a market where the trading partner is consistently favored. But is it a fair market? Like humans, plants and fungi are incredibly opportunistic. There's evidence that the fungi can penetrate into a plant's cell wall and hijack the plant's own uptake nutrient system, creating a dependency of the plant on the fungus. There's also evidence that the fungi are good at inflating the price of nutrients. They do this by extracting the nutrients from the soil, but then rather than trading them with the host, they hoard them in their network, so this makes them unavailable to the plant and other competing fungi. Basic principle of economics. As resource availability goes down, the price goes up. But it's not all in favor of the fungus. Plants can be extremely cunning as well. Orchids, or the thieves, tap directly into the network and steal all their carbon. Rather than photosynthesizing, they tap into the network, steal the carbon, and give nothing in return. It's safe to say these types of parasites also flourish in our human markets. We don't see evidence of fungi helping dying or struggling plants, unless it directly benefits them. The trade system provides us with a benchmark to study what an economy looks like when it's been shaped by natural selection for hundreds of millions of years. So, are fungi better at making trade calculations than us?